So um, today, inshallah, we are going to um, cover chapter four. And chapter four is very important for you um, as you are starting to work on your TMA. Uh, so, uh, whenever you have any question, please don't hesitate to ask and make sure that everything is clear um, to you. Okay. Um, so, chapter four, as you can see there, um, is about um, creating your um, paper. And in this chapter, uh, we will do two things. Um, we'll practice writing the body of your paper, the body paragraphs. Um, and also we'll look at or practice um, integrating evidence into your paragraphs as well. And these two are really important uh, points for you to consider, okay? Now, uh, the first thing we're looking at uh, are the steps for writing the body of your paper. And this is in your book, page 72, if you'd like to uh, follow with me um, there, okay? So what are the uh, three steps? Step one, uh, is writing the topic sentence for each supporting point in your thesis. Um, uh, remember, um, we emphasized this before, and I'm repeating this, that it's very important for any paragraph to have a topic sentence. Okay, um, the topic sentence uh, um, is um, vital for a good piece of writing. Now, who would remind us what is the function of the topic sentence? What is the function of the topic sentence? I'm waiting for your response, please. Can you hear me? Okay, so any idea what is the function of the topic sentence? Why we need a topic sentence at the beginning of each body paragraph? Okay, thank you. The topic sentence presents the main idea the main idea of the paragraph, okay? Thank you. So this is the first thing, a topic sentence for each supporting point in your thesis, and we'll come to it once we look at the example there. Second thing, or second step is to review the ideas you plan to discuss about each supporting point. And the last one will be to write your first draft, to write your first draft, okay? Now, let's have a look at the topic sentence, number one, step number one. 
And this is where I think many students face problem. They find it difficult to write a good topic sentence, and that would be really vital for your paper. Now, a good topic sentence has a three qualities. What are they? One, it logically connects to the topic of the thesis. It logically connects to the topic of the thesis. Here we are referring to the thesis statement you wrote in your introductory paragraph. Okay? So if it does not connect to the topic of the thesis, then it's not a good topic sentence. Two, it logically connects to the focus of the thesis again. And remember, we looked at several, um, several uh, types of focus uh, previously, and you need to keep them in, in, in mind uh, whenever you, you write, okay? Um, the types of focus we've dealt with were in um, in, in, in chapter two, page I think um, page thirty one, thirty two. Okay. We have different types. If you remember, uh, we have cause, we have effect, comparison, definition, classification, problem and solution, process, argument, and so on. So um, one of those would be the focus of your thesis statement. And um, third quality, it repeats a supporting point. And this is very important, and this is a technical uh, thing that you need to practice, okay? So, what do you mean by these three qualities? Let's look at the sample, the example we have here, and things will be clearer for you. Look at the thesis statement and topic sentences from a student paper on communication problems between younger and older people, okay? What is the thesis? This is the thesis statement. Emphasis on individualism, loss of focus on extended families, and over-scheduled life styles are three reasons for the generation gap between younger and older people. Okay, so. Emphasis on individualism loss of focus on extended families, and overscheduled lifestyles are three reasons for generation gap between younger and older people. Now, this thesis tells us that the topic of the paper is the gap between younger and older people. Here we have the focus, okay? Gap between younger and older people. And the focus is the causes of this gap. So, what is the topic here? What is the, the core thing that we are discussing here or talking about is the gap between younger and older. Now, what is the focus? We have here the causes, the reasons of this gap. Okay, and here also we are given three reasons and these will be what the, what are these? These are the supporting points. The controlling ideas. What are they? Emphasis on individualism. This is one. Loss of focus on extended families. Two. And the third one is overscheduled lifestyles. Okay. So now, before I move um, um, here, remember we said once you have the um, controlling ideas or the supporting points, if you like. Now, 
these points should be your topic sentences. These points should be your topic sentences, okay? So now we will look at um, a number of topic sentences. Actually, we are going to look at the three topic sentences and we need to say whether these are good or, or not, okay? Any question about this slide before I move on, please? Feel free to ask, don't hesitate, please. It's very important that things are clear for you. Thank you, Rabab. Thank you, Maria. Okay, so let's move. Now, this is topic sentence one. Read it, please. Again, this is in your book, page 73 if you'd like to follow on your book. The value of independence is one reason why younger and older people become isolated from each other. What do you think? Is it a good one? Is it a good topic sentence? I'm waiting for your response. Remember the three qualities. Are the three qualities here? Does it connect to the topic of the thesis? The topic was um, the gap between younger and older people. Do you have anything here about the gap between younger and older people? Read it again, please, Rabab. Make sure. The value of independence is one reason why younger and older people become isolated from each other. The others. Okay, Rabab, so you see it now, okay? Younger and older people become isolated. So this is the gap. If they become isolated, then this is the gap. So this is the topic we are talking about. Yeah. Question two. Does it logically connect to the focus of the thesis? What is the focus? Remember, we said what? What is the focus? Thank you, Rabba. What is the focus? Causes, Mariam, thank you, good. So here, do we have causes? Good, thank you, Rabba. So the value of independence, the value is of independence. That, so that, that is one reason, correct? Good, so two are there, three. Does it repeat a supporting point? You need to read the original thesis statement. Does it repeat one of them? One of the supporting points in the thesis statement? Which word is repeated?
Remember, you don't need to repeat the exact word. You don't need to, to repeat the exact word. An equivalent word, a synonym would do. No, isolated is not um, from the supporting. Isolated is, uh, it's about the gap, that is the focus. Now we're talking about the supporting points. Good, thank you, Rabab. Reason, good, reason. Okay, reason is uh, a word which is uh, repeated from the thesis statement. If you read the thesis statement, again, it says emphasis on individualism, loss of focus on extended families, and overscheduled life are three reasons. So reason, one reason is one of the three reasons, okay? So actually, the three, the three um, um, qualities are, are here. Notice that the topic sentence repeats the focus idea reason and is connected to a supporting point in the thesis, but does not repeat the same words. That is the value of independence. And the topic sentence is another way to say emphasis on individualism. The topic sentence also includes a logical connect to the topic. In other words, younger and older people become isolated from each other is another way to express generation gap. Okay, so for this, we can say that this is a good topic sentence. Jamila Hamami I'm um, sorry, can you please okay. mute your mic? Now, there are many ways to write good topic sentence that expresses the ideas and the thesis statement without being uh, repetitious. That means you don't need to repeat, okay? For this paper, equally good topic sentences for the first body paragraph would be, um, we have here two examples, you can see. The trying not to appear too dependent can cause older people to limit their interaction with their children. So here, the trying not to appear too dependent. Okay, this is, so this is one of the supporting points. Cause is a, um, uh, an equivalent, if you like, or a synonym to reason. So we here, reason is not repeated, but we are using a, a synonym. All the people to limit their interaction with their children, limit their interaction with their children. This would replace what the gap between the two generations. So this is one. Two, valuing their independent lifestyles causes adult children and their parents to lose contact with each other. Again, we are saying the same thing, but differently. Any question about the first one here? Any question? No? Okay. Thank you, Reem. Okay. Let's move on then. Now, looking back at the thesis statement again, we can see that the topic sentence for the second section of the paper about the loss of focus on extended families. What does this mean? Before I move on, if you read the thesis statement again, we have three supporting ideas mentioned there. So topic sentence one was about the first point. Topic sentence two should be about the second point, okay? 
usually you would follow the same um, order you have of, uh, of the points in your thesis statement. So the order you would like to go on and write in the body paragraphs, it would be better to keep it um, um, similar. Okay, you go on the same, in the same um, order. So now it was about what the loss of focus on extended families. So let's see this topic sentence. Read it, please. The change in family structure from extended families to nuclear families has resulted in less connection between generations. Do we have the three qualities here? Does it connect to the topic of the thesis? I'll ask you, and please, you respond. Uh, you can write your response there. Does it connect to the um, topic? It, it, it disconnects. Good, thank you. So, uh, yes, question two. Does it connect to the focus of the thesis? The three points, does it connect to the focus? Yes, okay, because again here, remember, we have uh, loss of focus on extended families. This is, this is the second focus point there. So here we have, it says, less connection between, sorry, the change in family structure. So from extended families to nuclear. Nuclear means small families, extended large, large families, okay? So again, we are talking about uh, the extended and nuclear, it's mentioned there, which is, as you uh, answered rightly, yes. The third one, does it repeat a supporting point? Yes, okay, good. Any question about this? Okay, next one. For the third section of the paper, that is the third body paragraph, if you like, okay? Third section of the paper about overscheduled lifestyles. So the um, sample uh, um, of suggested um, Topic sentence given here is, a third cause of the generation gap is the lack of time that family members have to spend with each other. Again, the questions, the three one, does it connect to the topic of the thesis? The gap between generations. Yes, Mariam, thank you. Yeah. Okay, Reem, thank you. Good. Okay. Um, because it's here. Generation gap. It's there. Does it connect to the focus of the thesis? Remember the three points. Does it connect to one of them? Yes, okay, good. And which is the third cause is good. Um, last one, does it repeat a supporting point? Does it repeat a supporting point? Yes, okay, thank you, Rabab. The third one, the third point. The third point. Overscheduled lifestyle. Overscheduled 
okay here we are not using the same word but what is used here lack of time lack of time that family members have to spend with each other lack of time good thank you Rabab. so this would replace it i mean uh, we are repeating the idea not the wording itself okay and as you can see the three topic sentences have different structure and this is the beauty of writing academic writing that you can use different structures different uh, patterns that would add um, to your piece of writing there are many other equally good ways of writing topic sentences two and three as long as the writer is careful to include a logical connection to all the power parts of the thesis statement as we said as long as you cover um uh, what is mentioned in the thesis statement and the focus of the thesis statement then um your topic sentence is a good one thinking about language in this way and using it to help your reader see how your ideas are related is often called using guiding language because this would help the reader and better understand um, your ideas okay this is a good a good way um, okay guiding language for more information about guiding language see page 110 and chapter 5 you can refer to page um, 110 and chapter 5 we will do it of course um, uh, hopefully uh, maybe next week but um for now this is what is important here any question about this uh, before we move on to the practice any question Thank you, Mariam. Thank you, Shanza. Thank you, Zahra. Okay. Rabab. Okay. And here we have a question. If we want to consider the topic sentence as a good one, it should meet the three points, right? Yes. Yes. And remember, I've mentioned before that the, the, the topic sentence should support the thesis statement, should support the thesis statement. If it does not, then it is not a good topic sentence. Okay. It does not. If it does not support it, then it is not a good thesis statement. Let's have a look. Let's practice, do some practice, then things will be clearer even for you. Um, page 73 in your book, we have now you try. Um, and we'll, you have to do the same thing uh, we've just done. Uh, for each thesis statement, decide whether the topic sentences are appropriate according to the qualities of a good topic sentence. So keep the three qualities or these three questions in mind. Does it have a logical connection to the topic of the thesis? Does it connect to the focus of the thesis? Does it repeat the supporting point in a different way? Okay. Again, this is a new book, page um, 74. I'll give you, um, let's say, three minutes to decide on these A and B, okay?
Okay, so what do you think? Let's look at the first one. Uh, of course, the thesis statement you have there is, the negative effects of the internet can be defined as a deterioration um, in uh, courtesy while communicating and an isolation from other people. Um, the topic sentence A, uh, the decrease of politeness is common knowledge to those who work in network communication. So, is it an appropriate topic sentence or not? So, first you have to tell me whether yes or no, and give me reason. Okay, Noor says no, Rabab says no. Uh, Samia, no, good, okay. I would agree with you, but now you have to give me the justification why it's not a good one. What do you mean it does not relate to the thesis statement? In what way? What is the focus of the thesis statement? Thank you, Samia. You said it doesn't support the thesis statement. What is the focus of the thesis statement? Question for all of you. It's very clear. Thank you, good Rabab. The focus is on negative effects, yeah? The negative effects. Now, do you have anything here related to it? Is there a logical connection? No, so that's it. Thank you very much, good, good. So because it, it, it is not related to the negative effects, okay, then it is not a good one. Okay, if we, we had more time, we would work on developing it, but I'll leave this to you, you can do it your own. What about B? People who use the internet are lacking one of the most important things human beings need to have, connection to other people. Okay, so we have here some of you saying good one. Yes, okay. Okay, Samia, Rabab, Mariam, Shanza. Thank you, good. It is an appropriate one. It is an appropriate one. Any question about it? Thank you, Sami. Okay, so look at the second one. Thank you, Shans. Look at the second one then. Again, I'll give you three minutes. Exposure to violence, an inadequate rating system, and too little parental supervision are three reasons why children shouldn't play with video games.
Here you have a three um, topic sentences, huh? A, B, and C. Okay, time is up. So, topic sentence A. Appropriate or not, children in the United States have to uh, love to play video games. No, it's not. Why not? Because it doesn't support the thesis statement. Doesn't support the thesis statement. Thank you. Uh, do you agree with Reem? Do you agree with your colleague? Yeah, okay, I can see. The focus of the thesis statement is reasons. Okay, and here we don't have that. Okay. And we need some, we need the reasons. Okay. Uh huh. Okay, so. You are right. This is um, not appropriate. Um, uh, there is no logical connection to the focus of the thesis statement because, again, the focus is reasons why children shouldn't play games. Okay. Uh, and there is another one, another reason. So this is one. There is no connection. Okay. And another reason is. Remember the three questions. So this is one. Third one, I mean, the second um, reason would be no repetition of supporting points. You've already mentioned the focus, which is reasons, and also remember here we have exposure to violence, one, inadequate rating system, two, and Two little parental supervision. Three reasons. Okay, here um, the focus is not mentioned. No logical connection to it, and also um, no repetition of supporting points. Good. Thank you very much. What about B? Shenza says Thank yes because connects to the focus of the theme okay and Reem saying yes it's appropriate okay so we have the three three qualities here okay what about C maybe no why not dream? Uh, I have others saying yes. I find it it's yes, but it's not yes. related to the three, uh, this one for the three uh, exposure to violence and indicate rating. Why not? It says two, uh, two little parental supervision. This is mentioned there, correct? It is mentioned. Is a third reason children shouldn't play video games. So but it said well, only one reason. He didn't say the other two reasons. 
So it's okay. No, no, or, rem or? no. Remem remember, Reem, here we have hmm. three um, uh, three um, topic sentences. This is for hmm. diff these are for different paragraphs, different body oh, paragraphs. Okay, okay. Because so, in the okay. thesis statement we have a three reasons, hmm. so we we need a three body paragraphs. Okay, Shenza okay. saying here no, most welcome. Reem. Um, it's okay. Um, uh, Shenza okay. says it repeats a supporting point. Actually, here, yes, um, it's not appropriate because it uses words too similar to those in the thesis. It's um, actually like um, copy-paste, and please avoid this, okay? If you look at it, two little parental supervision, look uh, and read the thesis statement, the, the end uh, or the, th the third uh, point. Too little parental supervision are three reasons why children shouldn't play with video games. So actually it is copy paste, the second part of the thesis statement. And again, this is not, not good. Okay, you uh, remember we said, we re and we said we, we repeat the supporting points differently in other wording, in other wording. Okay, good. Well done. Well done. That's really good. Any question about um, the topic sentence? No. Okay. So now I expect you when when you write, I expect you when you write to uh, to follow this in your writing. Um, and you need to, uh, once you write your topic sentence, the first sentence of your body paragraph, you need to ask yourself the three questions. Okay. Uh, does it link to the um, topic of the thesis, logically? Does it connect to the focus? And does it repeat supporting point in a different way, in a different way? Okay. Okay then, let's move ahead then. Now, that was step one, which is writing the topic sentence. Step two, we said review ideas for your paper. Review ideas for your paper. Uh, you can read this page 75. I'll go through it quickly with you. Um, it's ask you to um, take a few minutes to look over everything you have gathered to help you write this paper. Remember, I advised you and we agreed to follow um, uh, or to do this TMA as a process because we said writing is a process and you should read uh, many uh, or several resources uh, to gather information and then you can start your writing. So this is what they want you to do. Just take a few minutes, look over everything you have gathered to help you write this paper, like the articles you read, uh, your responses or summaries of the articles, the notes you took on your readings and class discussions, your outline and your thesis statement and topic sentences if you have already written something. Then, decide which supporting point to work on first. It can be the first point in your outline or a later one. Here, uh, remember I said, once you put you, the ideas in a certain sequence in your thesis statement, it would be better to follow uh, the same sequence in the body paragraph, in the writing, I mean. But here we are reviewing. So um, it can be the first point in your outline or a later one. You can write your paper in any order and arrange the sections into your final order later. Okay, because again, um, sometimes, and we'll look at it in a minute, sometimes students have problems with the ideas. They have several ideas, but they might find one of them is easier to start with uh, in writing, I mean. So it's okay, you can do that. And then you can put them together and create the coherence and the link between them. 
You can write your paper in any order and arrange the sections into your final order later. Think about the most important things you want to say about this point. It's important to include at least one piece of documented evidence in each paragraph of your finished paper. So jot down, write down some notes to remind yourself what evidence you will use in this section. And again for you, uh, some students asked me, what is the difference between the team A uh, or the paper we are writing here and the paper we wrote, for instance, in 111 or 112? I said, this is the main difference. This is the main difference that here you need to incorporate, you have to use uh, uh, some sort of evidences, okay, some sorts of evidence like uh, referring uh, using quotation um, summarizing paraphrasing others okay work to support your idea and you need to see where to where to use this evidence don't overuse it as we discussed last time okay but you need to use evidence uh, to support your ideas as you write and this and here where you need to have the in-text citation to mention, to acknowledge the source you referred to. As you write, consider several different ways to develop your ideas and make sense of them for your reader. For instance, you can provide examples, definitions, explanation, reasons, summaries, comparisons, and contrast of ideas, alternative perspectives, or personal experiences. So these are types of evidence that you can use or the support you can have there. Um, using a variety of strategies to explain your thought and ideas will make your paper more interesting and convincing. And this is very important, sorry. Very, very, very important thing to make it more interesting and convincing. When you feel comfortable with your planning, move ahead to your next step, the writing itself. Okay, so now, first you need to write your Introductory paragraph with the thesis statement. Think of your thesis statement. Is it okay? And you have the topic, you have the focus, you have the supporting points there. Then you start writing the body paragraphs. And again, as mentioned here, you can write them in any order. And later on, once you wrote the, um, uh, for instance, you need the three body paragraphs or four, I don't know, it depends on you. You um, put them in the order you would like uh, and create the coherence between them um, to make them uh, more interesting and more convincing, okay? And then you can start, of course, writing. Any question about this step two? Okay, several of you saying no, okay. And by the way, some of you have already submitted the draft, their draft to me, and I have not responded yet because I wanted to go through this first. Uh, I think at least one of you um, have uh, amended her uh, TMA, the draft she sent to me. And again, you can still do that throughout going, um, I mean, while we are going through this, because I'm sure new ideas will come up to your mind. Okay, now, so now you are ready actually to write. So we move to the third step, which is writing a first draft, writing a first draft. And here we have three points to go through or to look at. Your goal is to get your ideas down so they will be much easier to work with. So whatever idea you have, you need to jot it down. You have to write it down, okay? This is one. Rearrange the order. Add missing parts. Fine tune your wording and grammar. And this is a, a, a continuous editing process. And, um, that's why we call it a draft. I mean, there you have freedom to rearrange, to add, uh, to remove even, to fine tune, um, to check the grammar, spelling, and all of this, okay? Then set yourself a time limit. Two hours is probably a good time length to allow. That means for writing. 
Um, it's always good to, to, to time yourself and practice, especially when you have um, examination, for instance, and you have a given time to finish the task, okay? Um, here it is a, um, a take home assignment. Uh, you are not uh, bound to any time limit, but um, that would be, uh, I mean, for your own good to develop your skills. Um, in, in this regard. Okay. Now, I have three other uh, points regarding writing your first draft. Let's go through them together. First one is no one best way. No one best way. Again, each one of you could do this in a different way. Um, and no one can tell you this is right, this is wrong. Uh, you, um, what works for you might not works, work for others. I mean, it, it depends on, um, on the way you would like to, uh, to work, okay? That there is no one best way to, to what? to write the the, um, um, the draft. I mean, uh, I've suggested something, I've, I've suggested a way, but it's not a must to follow that way. Um, you can follow um, your own preference. Okay. What's important is that you have an outline and then from that outline, you can work out your um, your draft whether you'd like to start by writing um, the easiest part first and then move to the more um, difficult ones, or no, you just want to go through uh, them in order and write uh, one long paragraph about each supporting point, okay? Uh, it's, it's, again, it's, it's, up to, it's up to you. Uh, I know some students got used to write, for instance, one long body paragraph with all the points. And this is, of course, when it comes to the organization of an essay is wrong. And some students even lose some mark for that. Well, when you write the draft, you can write them as one if, if you think that is easier for you. But that would be your first draft. When you edit it, the second draft, you have to divide the, these points into separate paragraphs. Each topic sentence should be uh, presented in a separate body paragraph, okay? Um, and it would be up to you. So this is the first one. There is no one best way to write the draft. Second, getting out of writer's block. What does it mean? What do you mean by writer's block? It is the feeling you have when you when your mind goes blank and you have no ideas. And this happens to all of us. Sometimes we don't know what to write. I mean, as if we have empty mind, absent mind. We don't know, okay, what to write. No worries. This is again um, normal, okay. So, what to do in this in, in this way? What to do if you face this writer's block? status or feeling. You can start with what you have already accomplished. Yes, that's about okay. Okay, you can start with what you have already accomplished because uh, as we said, I mean, um, the first one is to gather information, uh, to, to read and gather information, then you have something there. You have written something there. Start with it. Start with it. That would that would trigger your ideas and you then 
uh, you would go on writing, okay? Talk to yourself or someone else about your paper. Um, this is a, a good thing also. Okay, but here, a very important, very important thing to keep in mind is do not write the paper with someone else and do not write, uh, let others write it for you because otherwise you will end, you might end up having plagiarism. Because you might write uh, similar papers using similar evidences and so on, that would be a problem for you. So please avoid this, okay? So, but talking to yourself or someone else about your paper um, is really helpful and it will give you ideas, okay? Uh, uh, and again, this will trigger the ideas and, and then you will have more to write and you can expand um, your ideas um, in a more formal way. You can speak to yourself, I mean, just... Um, in any way, but when it comes to writing, of course, you need to put that in a formal way. The so third point, start with something easy. Yeah, okay, start with something easy. Uh, because once you, you write something, again, this would give you a good feeling and um, this will encourage you um, that you can you can um, go through the challenging part there okay so since writing the draft does not mean going um, um, through the points in order in a certain order you can write about anyone that you think is easier than the others um, the fourth point is take regular breaks Take regular breaks. Don't force yourself to finish whatever in one session, working continuously for, I don't know, one, two hours. No. Take breaks. Breaks will, uh, of, of course, uh, recharge you if you like, okay? Um, and uh, you would refresh, refresh your mind, and that would be really good for, for you. And if you do these or some of these, I'm sure you will get out of the block status you have, okay? But again, don't worry, as I said, um, having or passing it through writer's block period or feeling is normal and it could be healthy um, for, for you to, um, to, to, to produce a good piece of writing, okay? Um, last point is first draft, working draft. What does it say? What does it mean, sorry? It's, it is a draft, so it is not a final. It is not a final version. So that means you still can work on it. It will change as you continue to work on it, okay? But when you have it in the front of you, that will make the process of expanding your ideas and refining your paper much easier for you. Then you can add more, you can write more, okay? Um, and once you have your draft, then you will have done the hardest part and can return to work on smaller pieces. Um, as we said, refining, um, editing, uh, adding, removing, doing all these um, uh, smaller pieces until the writing is just the, um, the way you want it. And you can say that this is my final version. And um, th this is the essay or the paper I would like to submit, okay? And remember, your tutor is there. Uh, once you've reached there, um, you can also consult your tutor. And that would be uh, an additional help to you to make sure that what you have produced 
produced is uh, a good piece of, of uh, right. So um, this is the first part of the session today. Remember, we said we are talking about writing. So any question about this part, please don't hesitate, dear. Ask whatever questions you have in mind, please. So far today, we've talked about having or writing a, a, an appropriate topic sentence, and then we talked about writing your first draft. Any question about these points? Okay, some of you saying no. No. Okay, good. So let us move, let us move to the second part or um, or second topic of today's session, which is integrating evidence into your paragraphs. And this is very important because again, as I said, this is the, the major difference between what you uh, wrote in the previous courses like 111, 112, okay? So let's go through it together. And again, if you have any questions, please stop me and ask your questions anytime. Um, this is in your book, page 79, so you can look at it if you'd like there. So, we have three steps for integrating your evidence. What are they? One, paraphrase or quote each piece of evidence. Paraphrase or quote each piece of evidence. Again, we are uh, using uh, someone else's work to support your uh, work, support your um, ideas, okay? Two, introduce the evidence. Three, connect the evidence to um, on the topic sentence. So, you have to do three things. Now, you have a source, okay, written by anyone. X, Y person, then you need to take that piece of work and paraphrase it, write it in your own words, okay, or even summarize it in your own words, okay, and then you have to introduce it to the evidence, or you can use direct quote, for instance, remember using, but again, you need to acknowledge it, and you have to introduce it, um, uh, in the uh, in your paragraphs, how to do that? We we'll look uh, today at that, and that would be again something very important you pay attention to in developing your paper. Connecting the evidence on the and again connecting the evidence um, on the topic sentence. This is important because we do not want you to just copy something from the net or from an article wherever and just paste it there and it, it would stand out. I mean, once someone reads the, the article, um, he or she can notice that this part is different, not, not related to your um, article. That would be really bad thing, really bad thing. So you need to incorporate it. So here you have to connect it to um, your paragraph and to your topic sentence there. Ultimately, the goal is to support your ideas, yeah? So it must be connected to the um, topic sentence. Any question here? Okay. Let us move. Now, quoting and paraphrasing evidence. Now, look at the example. This is in your book, page 79, as I mentioned. 
we have here um, the original piece, the, the original uh, excerpt uh, or part from source to be used as evidence. You can read it there. To behave aggressively is no longer considered unfeminine and unattractive. Gare characters are expected to be assertive and achieve achievement oriented. Okay, and this was written by Hopkins, Susan, and the source is there. I cannot see it clearly. Uh, um, crash, couple girls are heroes now. Okay. Now, how can you use this? piece of evidence in your in your um, uh, to support your um, topic sentence or to support your idea here is an example Read it, please. So what do you notice here? Here we are using what? A direct quotation, a direct quote, yeah? And at the beginning, we use what? According to, and then surname of the writer, and between the brackets, remember we need the date. This is what you talked about last week, or the references. Uh, who can remind us what n dot d dot means? What does it mean? Thank you. Good, 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 good. Oh, I'm overwhelmed with your answer. No date. Excellent. Excellent, all of you. Good, good. Thank you very much. Mona, Shanza, Lud. Okay, good. No date. Good. So here we don't have the date. Okay, uh, and 13 there uh, is, uh, you, um, I think, the page number. Now, and then we have, as you can see here, Quotation mark, because we have a direct. So this is one, one way of doing this. Now, what if we don't want to use a direct quotation? Then we need to want to paraphrase it. Paraphrase it to say it in other words. Notice here, is it similar or I mean, is it um, too similar to the, to the original one? According to Hopkins, females in movies and books today are often hard driving and ambitious. Unlike in the past, it is now socially acceptable for women to act boldly and forcefully. Boldly and forcefully, okay? and boldly and forcefully would be to be assertive and achievement oriented. So as you can see here, we are saying the same differently, okay? We are paraphrasing it, but we are acknowledging the source. This is what I want you to do in your paper. You, you must do this, okay? You need to use evidences in your paper. If you don't do this, then your paper is incomplete.
Again, so these are two examples of using quotation and paraphrase. And we'll come to uh, um, incorporating them um, in the uh, paragraph in a minute. Now, when do we use when do we use direct quotation? Okay, and when do we use paraphrase? We have some guidelines. Let's go through them together. So, using quotations, this is page 80 in your book. We use direct quotations in only a few circumstances, like when the original is written in poetic language or provides a unique image. Okay. When the original is written in a poetic language and provides a unique image. Sometimes even we have, um, um, I mean, um, special language used there, uh, which you think would add to your piece of writing and you need to stick to a certain vocabulary, technical vocabulary that, I mean, uh, it won't be um, reasonable or logical to replace them with some common words, then you might stick to them because the language itself I mean, uh, is really um, something great to use there. The other case, when the original was spoken or written by a famous person and is generally recognizable as a famous saying. Um, so in this case, I mean, if it is um, really um, common and well known to people, there is no point in changing or paraphrasing um, the words there. So you will keep it again and use it as a direct quotation. Any question about these two points? Okay, thank you. Now, what about the other one, the paraphrasing? Using paraphrase, you can paraphrase the information you plan to use as supporting evidence in your essay. Again, if it does not support your essay, there is no point in using this evidence, okay? Um, recall that a good paraphrase meets these criteria. We have four or five points to remember. What makes a good paraphrase? It means the same as the original. You don't change the meaning. And this is challenging sometimes. No new ideas are added. Remember, it's not yours. So you don't have the freedom to change it and add things to it, okay? No important ideas are deleted. So if, if like we have four or three, four ideas uh, mentioned in that uh, uh, experts or that part you are paraphrasing, again, it's not up to, to you to uh, delete uh, important ideas because then the, the, uh, the, the, um, the idea itself might sound different. Um, so here you are changing it, and that is not accepted, okay? It differs enough from the original to be considered your own writing. This is a very good one. Remember one of the topic sentences that we considered inappropriate because it was almost copy-paste to the um, thesis statement, yeah? So here it's the same thing. If you are paraphrasing, so you, you try to change the structure. Uh, paraphrasing actually has got maybe um, two levels. It's the simple one, changing some vocabulary, and a good one, a really a good one, a whole paraphrasing would be changing the vocabulary and the structure of the sentences. Okay, so you need to do that. Then it would be considered your own writing and not someone else. Uh, but even though you still need to acknowledge, of course, the source. The last point I have here, it refers to the original, which is what acknowledging the, the source you use, the writer and the, the title of the, um, or the, um, 
the article or the date of the article, okay? So you have to refer to the original source and acknowledge it um, uh, in two places. Uh, in text, in the paragraph where you um, used it, and of course in the reference list at the end of your paper. Okay, any question about quotation, using quotations and using paraphrase? Okay, good. So, since you don't have a question, then the next logical part is how to use these quotations or how to introduce these quotations or paraphrases in our writing. That And that is the second part, which is introducing the evidence, how to introduce it to the reader, okay? So, once you have decided whether, the paraphrase, whether to paraphrase or quote, each piece of evidence, you need to frame it or introduce it, telling where it comes from, okay? Introduce or frame it. So, how do we do that? You need to include the author's last name every time you use evidence from your sources, like what we've seen in the example there, Hopkins. The, na the author's name and the date of um, publishing that source, okay? The source title is optional. Include the title the first time you introduce the source if you think it is important for the reader to know. So remember there we've, we've used Hopkins and then the date. If you don't have the date, you write n dot d dot. This is what is important. But if you think it's important for the reader there, this is in text citation, you can mention the title uh, the first time, not every time, only the first time, because you will write it in the list reference or the ref reference list at the end of your paper. Any, any question here? No? Okay, so shall we look at some examples? You have examples from uh, uh, page on page 81 to 83, okay? So let's look at them together. So here are some forms or formats for introducing your sources. We have several ones, okay? Uh, let's look at them together and that would help you and uh, this actually would be maybe our yeah, it is our last thing we do today together here um so format choices when you know the name of the author so i have the name of the author and by the way um Yeah, okay. Uh, here you have the name of the author and you have the name of the art, or the title of the article. Okay. So this is the choice, the first choice, what to do, as you can see. Okay. In the article, and you write the name of the article, the title of the article. With the, um, notice the, the, the title of the article between quotation marks. Okay. And then Clark, who's the clerk? the author, the surname, the last name of the, the author. We don't write the full name, only the surname, the, the last name. And then between two brackets, we have the date. If we don't have the date, what should we write? Waiting for your responses quickly. ND, good, thank you, Rabak. N dot D, don't forget the dot on, uh, sorry, N dot D dot, okay? because these are abbreviations, yeah. Yes, Shanza, good, thank you. And then write that students should stay, study, or should, um, yeah, study two hours for every hour in a class. So this is, you are using this um, piece of evidence to support your, your idea there, um, by Jim Clark. 
okay um, notice here after the the, um, the the beginning of the phrase and the propositional phrase in the article or in his article okay or in her article it depends on whatever comma then you the title between quotation mark and then the name the surname and the date and then you need a reporting verb a reporting verb we'll look at a list of them in a minute um be careful with using these verbs because these would have certain meanings remember uh, we have denotation and we have connotation for the the, the words Denotation is the, uh, the, the the dictionary meaning and connotation the meaning that the word could have depending on the context yeah okay so or um um what could it reflect so um because the verbs could reflect whether you agree or disagree with the writer and we'll see that in a in a minute okay so this is the, the first one and um, again as you can see here we have the structure propositional phrase like in the article okay and remember we said the article is um is, is optional the title is optional but if you think it's important it's okay here you can even in the art you can i mean different structure you can say in college success directly the title of the um the title of the um, uh, article and notice here we have if you use it if you use the name as part of the propos uh, propositional phrase you need comma before the quotation mark inside the quotation mark okay and then you will clark 2010 writes and and here um you paraphrase uh, your um, you paraphrase your um, evidence okay and remember again for the verbs um, here they remind you to use the present tense present tense because since you are using it then it means it's still uh, believed uh, true then you um, you use present tense and also here the reporting verb is simple present simple present so here right simple present that students should study here we have the present tense. any question about the first choice no okay so let's move to choice two and still we are talking when we know the name of the author choice two um the example given here according to clark 2010 in college success students should study two hours for every hour in a class again we are using the same uh evidence if you like but we are introducing it differently so we are starting here with um, the propositional verb uh, sorry phrase is starting with according to not with n his or n and then directly no according to clark 2010 then comma n and then the name of the um, the title of the article or the source and then you write a full sentence here uh, students should study two hours for every um, uh, hour in a class so it's only the as you can see the dif the difference in um, the structure of the propositional phrase okay uh, and that is the difference with the first one third choice you start directly with the name clark 2010 writes again here if you want to mention the name 
or the title of the article. If not, you can say directly, Clark's 2010 writes that students should study two hours for every hour, for every hour in a class. So again, here we have the third choice, okay? Again, quickly, the first choice, as you can see, we start with the propositional phrase in the article or in and directly the name, and then you introduce this, the name, and the quoting verb, and so on. Second one, again, we have propositional, but instead of in his article or in the article, we use with according to. And then you mention the the title of the source and um, you paraphrase it. The third one, we don't start with a, a propositional phrase, okay? We start with the name of the, um, the subject uh, author and the date, and then the verb, and then we have propositional phrase after the reporting verb, okay? And then um, the last one will be the noun clause or the paraphrase part. This is the first format. If you know the name of the author, any question about it? So we have three choices if we know the name of the author. No, no, no. Okay. Again, please, you can refer to it in your book, page 81, 82. Huh? Read it again. If you have any question later on, you can still ask me. Now, the second format, when we don't know the name of the author, you have a source, but the name is not mentioned and you don't know it. So what to do? When you don't know the name of the author, use the article title. In this situation, the article title is the subject of the sentence, okay? So the focus would be on what? The title. Let's have a look at the examples here. So here, as you can see, the article college survival tips. Again, the title of the article is between quotation mark and then you have um, the date. Recommends that students prepare a daily schedule. Prepare a daily schedule. I think it is it is clear it should be clear for all of all of us here. Any question about this? No question. Okay. I think it's it's direct. It's direct. Um, the title of the um, article, the uh, the date, and then, for instance, here we have recommends, a, um, a verb, a reporting verb, and then you introduce the paraphrase, okay? Now, sometimes it is useful to include information about the author if he or she is an expert on the topic. Do this only the first time you use source. I've mentioned this already before, okay, but um, uh, just to uh, make it clearer for you, okay. Uh, for instance here, Clark 2010, Director of College Success Program at Winston University. So this was not there in previously. Now we add it. Maybe this would would be useful. You think it would be useful and might add um, to the credential um, of the, the, the writer here uh, you are um, referring to um, and make your uh, evidence stronger, then yes, you can, especially if that person is a guru, is a figure of uh, authority, then um, yes, that would be an added uh, value um, to your um, writing. Okay, so you start with the name, date, and then the, you give the information about the author, and then you continue as we've done before then. Uh, 
Any question? These were the okay, the formats. So we have two formats. We are when we know the name and we don't when we don't know the name. Okay, when we don't know the name, then we focus on the title of the article. If we know the name, we have um, three choices um, that we can follow. Okay, uh, starting two of them starting with a prepositional phrase and one of them starting with the author directly. Okay, uh, and added to um, when we know the name also, of course, sometimes it's useful to include information about the author as we've seen here. And that uh, is um, considered useful, especially if the person you are referring to is a, a person or a figure of authority um, in his or her field, and that would add to your uh, paper. Any question, dear? Before I move to the last point I need to cover with you today. No? Okay, others you don't have? Good, okay. So what is the last part for us today? It is... Um, the verbs that we use um, or the common verbs used for introducing evidence okay we have two cases here let's look at them first one if you have a neutral stand toward stands towards um, the evidence if you have a neutral stance towards the evidence that means you are not showing whether this evidence is, um, um, if you are supporting, agreeing or disagreeing, okay? You are, um, you are taking a neutral stance here, okay? You don't have a strong feeling towards this, whether you agree or disagree with it. Um, and as you can see here, example of these verbs, writes, states, remarks, explains, notes. So if you said Clark 22 writes that students she didn't, now here this does not reflect whether you agree or disagree with what he is saying. Okay. The other one, you can signal your disagreement or doubt about a piece of information by using one of these and here we have like argues claims suggests so if you said clark argues or claims or suggests that means i do not agree with with this i do not agree with with this okay now if you don't agree if you disagree with them then this is a situation here, yeah? Logically, you need to, what? In this situation, after you have presented the idea, the reader will likely expect you to provide a contrasting opinion. What is the, the opinion that you agree with, for instance? Look at the example here. Clark 20. 10 argues that students should study two hours for every hour in a class. So this is the idea you are paraphrasing of Clark, yeah? What is, it? since you use here uh, argues, that means you don't agree with this. So what is your uh, idea? On the other hand, other experts in the field state that too much studying causes students burn out and stress. So this is what you believe in. This is what um, the other idea that you agree with. Any question about these two cases?
Hello. No questions. Okay. The others? Thank you, Maria. No? Okay. Then the, the last the last thing connected to this as well is to present information from a study, use one of these verbs. Clark's 2010 research on successful college students found, showed, demonstrated. Here we are not mentioning only uh, the name, the author's name. We are referring to his research, to his study, okay? So in this case, you will use um, these uh, words, uh, verbs, sorry, found, showed, demonstrated. Okay? And notice they are, these verbs are in the past. These verbs, this research was done in the past. And here you are presenting information mentioned in that um, research or uh, study. Again, for more information, please, you can refer to um, your book, page 84, and also you can remember, um, you can, uh, in your book, it's mentioned also there, um, you can refer to this website, okay, um, and you can find uh, more information on this. That is chapter, or that was chapter four. Um, any questions? Thank you, thank you all of you. So next week we'll go back to um, Harvard, okay? Uh, now we have um, only to go through uh, uh, other cases of Harvard and chapter five. Um, I see which would be better for you. Um, is it to go through the ha more uh, cases of Harvard or to finish chapter five and then um, you will have a clear idea about everything and uh, we can work on Harvard. And again, okay, someone is suggesting finish chapter five first. Um, Okay, but please make sure that you refer to the link I provided um, on LMS about uh, Harvard. Please read the cases, the different cases and the ones, okay? No problem, good. Okay, since um, several of you wants me to finish the chapter first, no problem. So next week we'll take chapter five. But uh, please make sure you read and study the cases of Harvard because you will need... Uh, to um, document your references, please, okay? Okay then, thank you very much. See you next week um, and we will be doing chapter five. Uh, again, till then, if you have any question, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much, take care, goodbye.